Welcome to the fourth topic of our series, Seven Keys for a Happy Marriage. Today we are going to talk about assertive communication. In Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4, the prophet said, The Lord God has given me tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. That's what we all want, to be able to communicate in such a way that we lift up others, that we encourage those that are around us, and how important it is inside of our marriage. Christ was and is always our greatest example. And in the days when he was walking here through this world, he always encouraged people. One day he met the centurion that had a servant that was sick. And when the centurion showed such a great faith, Christ told him, Verily I say unto you, I have not found such a great faith even in Israel. When Christ met the Phoenician woman that had her daughter sick, he also praised her for her faith. And he said, O oh, woman, what a great faith you have. Be it done unto you as you want. So he healed her daughter and he appreciated her faith. So that was Christ when walking here through this world. And one day, something special happened when Mary came and anointed him with the perfume. People around, they were criticizing her. Everybody was talking against her, including the disciples who were offended by what she had done. In that moment, when she was being despised by everyone, Christ defended her and he lifted her up. He told her and the disciples around, he said, you know, wherever this gospel is going to be preached around the world, throughout the ages, this act she has done will be remembered. So when everybody was criticizing, Christ encouraged her and lifted her up and helped her to continue excited about following him. That's what we are supposed to do. That's what we want to do inside of our marriage as well. Sometimes your wife or your husband might not be doing so well and will need some words of encouragement, especially when your spouse makes some mistakes and is being criticized or despised by others. Yes, others can sometimes despise your spouse, but you have to be there. You need to be there to encourage him, to encourage her. So uh, that's all what you want to do to have a happy marriage. Some days ago, I met a sister. She was asking my wife and myself, saying, you know, please pray for me that I may learn how to drive. And she was telling us her experience. She said she tried to learn driving with her husband, but he was not patient at all. And actually the instructor of a school told her, you know, with your husband nearby, you cannot learn to drive. And I want to tell you, if you are a husband, teach your wife to drive, but do it patiently. Encourage her, tell her she's doing well, and only teach her if you are able to do so. To say words of encouragement, to uh, say some assertive words, communicate assertively, giving her confidence that she can do it. It's going to be a pleasure, something you remember forever, and she'll remember forever those moments you are teaching her to drive. If you cannot do it patiently, then don't do so. But if you can do it, you will remember it with happiness for the rest of your lives. If your wife or your husband lost the job, or had a car accident, never come and say, I knew it was going to happen because the way you drive, you are not careful. Don't criticize. Instead of saying that, you just say, you know, you can fix it. You are going to get even a better job because I know you work hard, you do your best. Say words, assertive words, assertive communication to encourage this person that God has chosen to live with you, to continue motivated on your side and doing his best, her best to work and to make the family happy. There is a text on Ministry of Healing, page 561, where the Word of God says, be quick to recognize the good qualities in each other. So that's what you want to do. That's assertive communication. Recognize the good qualities. Always talk about the good qualities of your spouse. And pay attention if you are not doing the opposite. You might be doing it and not noticing always criticizing, always saying something negative, always correcting. So ask the Lord to give you discernment so you can see if you have doing it the wrong way and start from now on doing your best to bring confidence to the life of this person you love. The text continues saying, the consciousness of being appreciated is a wonderful, stimulating and satisfying thing. What the text is saying here, once you tell someone, you tell your spouse, he or she is doing well, she is doing good, 
it will stimulate this person that you love to, if, to do every time even better. Have you ever been in a situation where you should have said something, but you didn't say? Perhaps in those moments when you should have said something and you didn't say, you are being too passive. But the opposite of it is when you say something and later you regret saying that because you notice you have said something unchristian-like, that is being aggressive in your communication. So we don't want to be too passive in our communication in such a way that we are misunderstood, but we don't want to be aggressive as well. Uh, neither too passive or aggressive communication will not help your marriage, your relationships. An understanding of assertive communication helps you to have what you need in your marriage, in your relationships, while allowing your loved ones to have his or her needs met as well. Many people, they confuse assertive communication with aggressive communication, with confrontation, and uh, when actually assertive communication will allow you to come closer to people, aggressive communication will alienate people from you, and you don't want it to happen in your marriage. You want to be someone that always lift up, always encourage your loved one, your partner. Ultimately, assertive communication will empower you to draw some limitations, some necessary boundaries in your relationships that will allow you to get what you need. You get your needs met and at the same time will uh, not alienate others, will also be a blessing for others. And that's what we all want to have, to be able to be this person that encourage others, motivate others without also having to damage ourselves or bring hurt to our own lives. Sometimes in assertive communication, you have to be able to say no when it's going to harm you. Let me give one example here. If your work starts to demanding too much from you, from your family, there are sometimes you have to say no to your boss and you can say it in the right way and you don't have to always accept what others ask you to do. But you can say it in a nice way and also saying it with confidence, knowing that it's going to be better for you. Work is good, we have to work, but if we accept too much load of work that will damage our relationship at home, will damage our health, it's not good. So that's being assertive in communication, being able also to say no in a nice way without harming others and satisfying your needs without damaging the needs of others. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 11, the Word of God says, it, it actually defines for us what assertive communication is. It says, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. So that's assertive communication, saying the right things in the right moment and also in the right way. Summarizing what we are being saying here, I want to say that you should always choose the right words when sp speaking to your wife or to your husband. Think about what you are going to say and say it in a way that will encourage, will motivate, at the same time you have your needs and your spouse's need fulfilled. Consider always how you are going to speak, because if you are speaking to a man, you have to say things in one way. If you are speaking to a woman, it's different. And children, they hear differently as well. For example, men don't like surprises. So if you have to say something to your husband that might not be exactly what he was expecting to hear from you, something new, something you have sometimes to help him to correct, prepare your husband before you say the things. That's saying the right thing in the right way, in the right moment. That's sure, men, most men, they don't like surprise. So prepare him slowly. And another thing, that I want to leave here as an advice for you, husband and wife. Don't bring the past things of your lives. You know, if there are some situations you have resolved in the past, let it go. Don't bring these things again to your marriage. I always remember, oh, but you said so, oh, but you did so. If you have talked about it already, you have forgiven, let it go. Don't bring the past to your marriage life. And another detail now for you, towards your husband, towards your wife, towards your children, Teach them by example. Be the nice person you expect them to be, and the Lord will do the rest. Don't criticize. We spoke a little bit about it, and I want to reinforce it. Don't criticize, but always encourage. Always lift up. Always say good things about this person that you love, that God gave to you. Don't compare your husband 
your wife with other people. Don't say, I, would I wish you were like your father or I wish you were like my father. I wish you would do like my mother used to do. I wish you would be like your mother is. It diminishes the person, diminishes the confidence. It's not assertive communication. It's not going to be good for your spouse, neither for you. Be empathetic. Always try to put yourself in the place of the person and think, how would I feel if she or he would say that to me? Ask the opinion of your husband, of your wife, when there are some situations at home. Let them participate. That's part of being assertive in communication. Like, for example, if there is a, a leaking tap on the sink, just come and say how you think we should solve it. So let your wife, your husband participate in your plans, in the things, in the problems, and also in the solutions of things that you need solved in your life. And uh, for closing, I want to say, just follow the example of Jesus. Always encouraging people, and especially inside of your marriage. Encourage this person that you love, and you are going to see things happening the way you want them to be. So always use assertive communication to bless those that God will put in contact with you, and especially in your marriage. Never criticize, always encourage. God bless you and your marriage. Thank you.